Okay, we're going to do some capacitance for different geometries. And there are really just a few steps you need to follow. They're not saying they're easy, but they're steps you have to follow to find these. First of all is assume Q. Okay, in other words, say there's Q on this, on this uh, object, whatever it happens to be. The second is find E field. And I'm going to say using Gauss, using Gauss's law. That's usually the way we do it. And then C, knowing E, calculate V. So we're going to be integrating over that E field. And then finally, C equals Q over V. When you have this, you're going to have this E field in charge of Q. The voltage will there before, therefore be in charge of Q, or the potential. Um, Q divided by some function of Q will get rid of the Q and we'll have a relationship that will give us the capacitance. So let's get started. Uh, I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do an isolated sphere, which sounds a little odd, but here's the sphere. And uh, we want to say, we can think of that as the charge, the other plate being out at infinity. Um, so I'm going to say, okay, this has a charge Q. And I am going to find the capacitance. So first I assumed a Q, then I find the E. Okay, the E field outside a charged surface, assume uniform distribution, is just KQ over R squared. The voltage, well, that's, that's actually easy. From infinity is just KQ over R. I could uh, integrate this over R, but this is so easy for a point charge. Okay, and then the capacitance is just Q over V equals Q over KQ over R. The Q's cancel. It just ends up being R over K, or if you prefer, 4 pi epsilon 0 R. Very easy, right? Um, don't get used to it, because it's a little harder as we go on. Uh, let's go to a spherical capacitor now where we have two spheres. And it looks very similar, but this time I really can't get away with just writing V as KQ over R. So now it's a spherical capacitor where we have Q and minus Q nested. These, these are two parallel, or two parallel, uh, parallel, you can't call them parallel, two shells basically that are connected and have opposite charges there. So let me draw a line there. Charge is Q. I've already asserted that. The electric field is between those two is KQ over R squared. The voltage this time I really do have to integrate. That's eh, not entirely true. But at any rate, we're going to go this way. KQ over R, integral of KQ over R squared dr. And I'm going to go from what's called the out one, outside 1B one and the inside 1A. So I'm going to go from B to A. Let's go from the negative to the positive, okay? From B to A. Uh, and this is negative. I really don't so much care about that because it's, it's going to end up. I just want the magnitude anyhow. Uh, but this ends up being KQ over R negative. So that cancels the negative out in front. From B to A. Voltage equals KQ over B minus k q over a and so the capacitance equals you now let's get these together equals q over k q times 1 over b minus 1 over a the q's cancel 1 over b minus 1 over a is a minus b over a b i'm going to bring that to the top a b over K times A minus B. There's your capacitance. Okay, now we get into the nitty gritty. We're going to do something a lot harder here, and that's a spherical, excuse me, a cylindrical capacitor. And I'm going to draw these kind of roughly. Uh, here's the cylindrical capacitor. 
Okay. I should have done that differently, but okay. Uh, Q on the inside. Q. This is A. This one's B. Uh, that's really just hideous. Let me do it this way. A. B. Here we go. Q on the inside. Negative Q on the outside. And so once again, we've got to do, well, first thing we've got to do is we've got to use Gauss's law. We've assumed a Q. That was our first step. Now we find the electric field. And we've got to use Gauss's law. Okay, and there's Gauss's law. Let's use a lambda. Think of it almost like a wire. And we're going to, we're going to pick our Gaussian surface, as always, to be a cylinder around that cylinder. Okay, so the electric field is going to be constant at the level of that cylinder if we if we look at this as long enough um, we pull that out so it's just going to be e times the area of that tube around it the caps of my Gaussian cylinder are going to have no electric field through them again if I pick my cylinder my Gaussian cylinder somewhere in here okay so the area is just going to be the walls of that Gaussian cylinder 2 pi r times the height or the length of this. I'll just call it L there. Okay, and then Q enclosed is going to be lambda, I'll call that my linear density, times whatever the length is, divided by epsilon zero. And I'm going to check to make sure I've got that right. Um, the L's cancel, and so my electric field is just lambda to, uh, divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r, which is the same as 2 k lambda over r. Now we want to integrate that to get my, vo my uh, voltage or my potential between them. And I'm going to integrate from B to A, A to B to A, okay. And integral of 2k lambda over r dr. I mean, integrate of one over integrate <laughs> integral of one over r dr just ends up being log of r, and I'm going to evaluate it from A to B. Um, that's my voltage. Okay. Um, the absolute value of that, I should say, I've got a negative in there. That's, let, let's get rid of that negative by going 2k lambda log of b over a. All I did was switch these two to get rid of the negative. So my capacitance then equals q over v equals q over 2k lambda. Instead of lambda, I'm going to put q divided by the length log of b over a. The q's cancel. L comes up top. And you get 2. Instead of that k, I'm going to put a 4 pi epsilon 0 up top. Okay. 1 over k is the same as 4 pi epsilon 0. Um, Q's cancel, I get an L up, and I've got a log of B over A on the bottom. And that's really my final form. That's my capacitance. I think that pretty much covers it for now.